يسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم so dear brothers and elders this this subject of ruqya is very important because many people are stuck and suffering in their lives for years and not finding any issues going to different places spending a lot of money and sometimes also falling into shirk knowingly or not knowingly and many often this shirk also takes the image of deen so you're going to someone who's supposed to be a deen person and He's making shirk and involving you into shirk. So this is why there must be an Islamic solution to this problem. Uh, so the first point is uh, that sihr and jinn problems are a reality. It's not just stories or a mental weakness. Uh, because Allah Ta'ala says, وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ You ask Allah to protect us from the evil of those who blow on the knots. So sorcerers taking knots, for example, with your hairs or with your name and saying satanic things, one could say, but how can that harm me? But it, Allah Ta'ala is telling us it can harm. There is some evil in that. And you need to ask Allah Ta'ala to protect you from that evil. And if that did hit you, so you need also to use the words of Allah Ta'ala to free you from that evil. So it can attach a man's life so that he will not get any money. It can attach a woman's womb so she will not get any children. It can attach a student's mind so he will not understand at school. And uh, Allah Ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرْهُمْ جَمِيعًا يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ قَدْ إِسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْإِنسِ The day we gather them all, O oh, jinns, you have too much abused of humans. That means that of day of Qiyamah, many people will complain to Allah Taala that the jinns have ruined their lives, made them ill, made them crazy, and get their children disabled, separated their couple, uh, made them lose their money, their business, etc. And Allah Ta'ala is going to ask the jinns, well, why did you do this? Or why did you do all this harm to humans? And the jinns are going to defend themselves. And they say, no, it is the humans who came seeking problems with us. It is the humans who came to us asking our help, asking our protection. And when they had what they, they obtained, what they wanted, they did not fulfill their engagements with us. It's also the humans who went to pay the sorcerers, and the sorcerers sent us to harm the people. So we did not on ourselves directly go harm the people. They are the ones who are in the first place came looking for problems with us. And each one is going to try to justify his position. And Allah Ta'ala is going to make justice yawm al qiyamah between men and jinn so this also shows that the harm of jinns to people is also a reality and allah tabarakatala says also kadalika ma atal ladina min qablihim ar rasulin illa qalu sahirun aw majnun that is how any prophet has come before they said he is sahri is a sorcerer or he's possessed by jinns as they said to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that means in all times people know about sorcery and about possession by jinns and the second point, brothers, is now how can you recognize that you have a sihr or jinn problem? How can you recognize so that you don't confuse and you're having normal problems, anything happen, you say, oh, this is jinn, this is iron, someone has made this onto me. And also, if you have that kind of problem, you must know you have it so you know how to remove it. Um, so there are four symptoms that show you you have a jinn or sihr or iron problem. Uh, these four symptoms are mentioned in Quran. So the first one is blockages in life. You can't get a, uh, you can't get a job. You, your money gets wasted. You can't have uh, you can't get married. You, you can't have children. Um, you can't study. You can't pass examination. Whatever uh, project you have, it's not working. Whenever people promise to help you, they won't help you, and you're stuck. So unusual blockages and repeated repeated systematically so that you understand that there's something not normal going into your life you can't say it is bad luck all the time things are happening like that i mean there is an invisible force that is stopping you from going forward in your life and that is what is sihr and that is what allah says al the knots that means they title your life by sihr so you cannot go forward and the second symptom is unusual health problems so you have 
have pains, you have diseases, you go to doctors, they don't understand, you, uh, they, you, they pass you through examination, they don't find anything, and uh, you you're taking medicine, it's not going. For example, if you eat sihr, it's going to give you pain in your stomach. Now, uh, it is drops that are put in water or food. When you eat it, it will come in your stomach or intestines like glue. And the body is feeling that there is a strange corpse in your body, so it's going to attack it with the acids. So it's like if, you're, um, if something's itching and you are scraping your skin until it becomes red, so it gets a gastrite, and then it becomes bleeding, it becomes a cut, and then that becomes an ulcer and your tummy is swelling and you're having all different kinds of problems and the doctors don't understand. So you can take some medicine to, uh, to, stop, uh, to uh, stop the acidity of your stomach and that will relieve you for a moment but then it's going to come back because you cannot keep taking those medicines 24 hours and you need that acidity to digest your food and uh, they will tell you to avoid this kind of food, this kind of food, because that will make it worse. But still, the problem is still there, and it's lasting for years. So it's not, you can, it's not understandable. It's as if you have a cut that is lasting for years, and no one knows why this cut is there. You see, and for example, if you walk on sihr, that will give you pains in your legs, in your knees, uh, and that will give you that could give you, that's likely to give you skin problems, eczema, that they call psoriasis. So this psoriasis is a kind of eczema that appears suddenly on the body and sometimes it moves, sometimes it spreads, sometimes it shrink shrinks, sometimes it is itching, sometimes it is bleeding, sometimes it's having pus and sometimes it disappears and they don't under understand anything about it. Uh, why it is here, what is its process and how does it evaluate and how to stop it, they have absolutely no idea. And that comes only when you have a physical contact with sorcery. So most of the time you can walk on it, it could be done on purpose in front of your house or in front of your uh, shop or on the place where you used to sit in, or you can just walk on it, it's not meant for you and you just walk on it and it just uh, grabs on your, on your legs, etc. And there are many different uh, physical pains that can be caused by sorcery as Allah Taala says like the one who is shaked by crisis by shaitan so epilepsy due to jinns uh, and the third symptom of sihr jinn and ayn is unusual mental states that means you're getting angry too much unnecessarily excessively uh, you're getting sad depressed uh, you're having fears having anxiety phobies uh, you you cannot concentrate you're forgetting things you're repeating things uh, you're getting confused and you can be hearing voices and seeing things that can go all the way to madness so allah ta'ala says on this they learn from them how to separate a man from his wife. Some time ago, a couple came to me and the woman said that she is seeing blood in her dreams. So I told her that means they made sihr, they made jadu with her menses blood. And when they do that to a woman, that will change her blood, that means it will change her feelings. That means she cannot bear her husband. If he speaks, she, she, that gets her annoyed. If he wants to touch her, she cannot bear him. She told me that's exactly what's happening to me. I said, that is it. That's what Allah said. They learn how to separate a man from his wife. So the couple was fine and suddenly now they are having very big uh, fuss and dispute and uh, especially uh, sexual relations are getting very difficult and there's absolutely no reason. And that is the work of Sihir. And the fourth symptom is bad dreams, nightmares. So Sihir naturally comes out in your dreams. Also, uh, also jinns. For example, when they put Sihir in a graveyard, that will have the effect of making you become like a dead person. So you're always tired, even if you sleep as many hours as you can sleep, you will be always tired and you don't feel any more happiness in life, any interest in things and you start thinking about death and you'll be dreaming about dead people. So either dead people, you see them alive or live people, you see them death, dead or you see yourself dead or you see graves or you see funerals. So by any means, you see things linked to death. When they put the sihr in water, 
like a river or a sea. That is so that your life will go like water. You cannot uh, win, construct anything in, in your life. It's like you're building something in the water. So whatever you try to build, the water is taking it. And your money will be going like water. Is that if you are taking water in your hands, by the time you raise, or you raise your hands up, it's all gone. Uh, and you will be seeing water in your dreams. So you see rivers or you see yourself crossing rivers or falling into water or you see yourself swimming or under the rain or getting drowned. So by any means you will be seeing water in the dreams. When they put sihr in a high place like a tree or a mountain, that is meant to take your mentality over reality. So you will be imagining things, getting confused, uh, having fears, uh, doubting about people, doubting about things. Anyway, you'll be thinking things that are not real and you cannot concentrate on constructive thought. And that will also, uh, that will also um, uh, envelop your life so that you'll be turning around instead of going forward. So you're making efforts, effort, and every time you come back to your starting place. So you're going round and round and years, years pass and you didn't move anything in your life. And you'll be dreaming of heights climbing or flying or coming down or falling or being in an airplane, being in a high place or slipping just before you sleep. So by any means you'll be sleeping, uh, dreaming about heights. So this is just to show you that the sihr they do to you, this is how uh, you, the, the effect comes in your dreams. Uh, so these are the four symptoms that show you you have sihr or jinn or ayn problems. Blockages in life, unusual repeated blockages, uh, unusual health problems, unusual mental states, and bad dreams. So if you don't have anything of that, in alhamdulillah you have nothing. And if you have some, so it is possible that you have some kind of sihr or ayn or jinn. And you ha if you have a lot of them, so you have a lot of jinn and sihr and ayn. So that's how it is. So this is so that everyone can understand what he has, why he's got having these problems. All these problems that he's not understanding, this is how it is functioning. So if you see you have those kinds of problems, what should you do? So I am going to show you, inshallah, a way to treat yourself. And one of the purposes of these, uh, of these campaigns we are doing is to show you that it is not a matter of, there's no secrets in this. It's not something that is kept by, and you have to be very, very pious man so that Allah will show you by miracles. And it's not a matter of miracles and secrets. And uh, I j just take the example of sorcerers. A big people who make sihr, who prepare the sihr to make you eat, to do with your photo, that block your life, that block marriages, that block this. They're not pious men. They don't have miracles. They don't have karamat. Huh? It, they're just evil people, uh, maybe a bit more dumb, less intelligent than normal people. They just w give their life to shaitan because you need, they need to do satanic things to get that, uh, that power of making sihr. And then it's something that you learn and you do and it works. Uh, that's, how it, how, that's how it goes. And also how to remove that is not such a big deal. You just must understand how it is functioning and with what ayat, how to use to remove it. Uh, it does need some yani, piousness, but uh, any one of us, you pray, you ask Allah to I mean, can one say, no, I am too weak to ask Allah, I will ask someone to ask Allah for me. Is that possible? Well, you can ask someone to make dua for you, but you will also make lot, lot and dua for yourself. Huh? So that's basically how it works. So these symptoms so that each one can understand. And you don't need to have some special cash or some special istikhara or some special thing about it. If you see those symptoms, you understand the reasons. What is making this in your life? So how to deal with that? You're going to take some water, a gallon of 20 liters, and you read on it, Fatiha, Ayat al-Kursi, Allahu Ahad, Al-Falaq Al-Nas, plus three special verses to remove the sihr. It is the verses of Musa salam with the sorcerers of Fir'aun. It is where Allah Ta'ala says that Allah destroys the sihr by His words. It is these words of Quran that break the sihr and remove the sihr. So it is in Surah Al-A'raf, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ نَلْقِ عَصَاكَ فَإِذَا هِيَا تَلْقَفُ مَا يَفِكُونَ 117 to 122. And in Surah Yunus, فَلَمَّا أَلْقَى وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ مَا جِئْتُمْ بِهِ السِّحْرِ 81 and 82. And in Surah Taha, قُلْ لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَىٰ From 68 to 70. So all these verses, you're going to read them 11 times each. 
فاتحة آية الكرسي قل هو الله حد الفلاق الناس وسورة الأعراف 117 to 122 سورة يونس 81-82 and سورة طه 68-70 So when you have read this on the water that water will remove the jinn, sihr and evil lie by the will of Allah Taala. So what are you going to do with it? You're going to drink from it, you're going to bathe with it. So each night you take one bottle of a, of a liter and a half, you can heat it if you want to in the microwave or take it cold, you will empty it on your body. You can take a shower before or just directly uh, empty it on you. So you can wash in the bath or the shower, but you have to put a basin under you to collect that water to throw it outside in the garden so that it does not go with the waste and you're going to wash this way for 12 days and you're also going to spray your house so you put the water in sprayer and you spray all the house the walls the roof the earth the ground uh, the doors and the windows if you have a shop or a business or whatever workplace or vehicles that are not working because of sihir so you're going to spray them all with that water and it's going to go uh, so I'm going to explain to you about this method, what does it mean reading Quran in water to drink and bathe and spray your house is much more efficient than only reading in the house. The difference between both is like if you are hot and you're cooling yourself down with a fan and now you're cooling yourself down with a shower. So the shower will cool you down much more than the fan. This is how effective is reading Quran on water to drink and bathe and spray your house compared to just reading in the house. And also these verses, so the, the dua you find in hadith to protect yourself is reading Quran, also reading in your hands to wipe yourself, so that is protections. But once you are hurt, the protections now are not enough. You have to remove the thing that has happened to you. So this is why you must move on to treatment. And this is why you must do this procedure with water to remove what has got on you or in your house. Um, and also these verses I have given you, they are the essential verses of Ruqya. So they are the capital verses. Then you can add much more verses of Quran that are in the Hadith, in the Ruqya books or in Manzil or whatever uh, uh, verses you want or Dua of Prophet Sallallahu or you can read more than 11 times. So the more you add verses, the more you add Dua on it, the more the power of Quran will add into it. Uh, so even if you have a big, big problem, just keep on reading more and more and more until it will go. I'll just give you an example. I went somewhere in Madagascar and there was one lady, one day all her head, all her uh, hair fell off. Uh, and she got people to read on her 15,000 Ayat al-Kursi. I said, 15,000, how is that possible? She said, yeah, there are many of them and they read all night. You see? So, and Alhamdulillah, it went away. So it is to tell you that even if the problem is very strong, just read more and more and more and more and inshallah, it will overcome it. Also, when you read Quran on water, you can read on oil. So take um, uh, Habba Sauda oil or olive oil or any uh, massage oil or um, she butter and you at the same time read on water, read on it. After you wash, after you bathe with the water, you're going to massage your body with that oil. So as long as the oil is on your body, the Quran is continuing to work on you. So you better do that before sleeping so that all night long the Quran will affect on you and insist in the places where you have pains, where you have skin problems. And also, if you have uh, stomach pains, uh, you should buy sana leaves. It is recommended by Prophet ﷺ. He said, "Alaykum bi sana, walau marra fi sana." Drink sana even once a year. And it is these leaves when you boil and drink, it will empty your stomach. Uh, so that's recommended by Prophet ﷺ once a year to to empty it. Uh, so when you so you're going to boil one full tablespoon of sana leaves with half a liter of Quranic water, and then you drink it uh, on empty stomach before eating in the morning. That's going to empty your stomach. If you have sihir, it's going to scrape it out and give you pain because it is stuck like glue and it needs to be scraped out hardly. So if it does give you pain, you understand you have eaten sihir, so you're going to drink it again and again every day until it gives you no more pain. So the day you drink it and you don't feel any pain, only diarrhea, you understand that the sihir is finished in your stomach. You see? So this is very simple, very easy, very accessible and no cost, nearly no cost at all and very efficient. Because so many people suffer of this, uh, so many people, subhanAllah, today I had a patient, he had pains in his legs and uh, he went through surgery 
And after they operated, he asked the doctor, so what was it in my leg? And the doctor made just, uh, how do you call that? A uh, question. He does not understand, subhanallah. Cutting your leg, looking inside, not finding anything, not understanding anything. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So some people go even through operations, whereas it is just sihr and there is just this very simple process anyone can do and it will be gone insha'Allah. So we have more things we use in ruqya, for example hijama cupping if the sihr is in the body making pains. So Rasulullah said al hijama shifa min arba'ina da, it is a remedy for 40 diseases. In another hadith, ilaju min sihr it is a remedy from sihr. So how to remove sorcery, jadu, uh, black magic by hijama, you have to put the hijama on the place where there is a problem and read the ruqya on the person. Uh, read the ruqya and the person so the ruqya will will burn the jinn and the sihr and the uh, cupping will uh, suck it out so just to give you an example on how it works it's like you're fighting with a ghost and if you give punch him or stab him it will not do anything to him but you, if you have a strong hoover that can suck him so he, you're going to t uh, suck him in and he cannot resist to that so this is how the cupping works on jinns and sorcery that are in the body so it is very efficient and it is harmless uh, to the person and it is sunnah mashallah so uh, what I am saying that we have this we have more verses and things we use for uh, ruqya so we are on a campaign of training and um, explaining and also treating people so if someone is interested in learning more about Rokia, he can come to our center anytime. It's a permanent center open from 9 to 9, 7 days a week. So you can come and train and learn everything about it. It's open also for women because we need women to do cupping on women. But so women can also learn everything about Rokia from A to Z. But at least we need women to do cupping to women. And we started this center two months ago. Alhamdulillah, I came from France with my team. Alhamdulillah, I spent all my year going around to, in campaigns and training people. Now we have over 60 centers throughout 20 countries so the purpose is to train establish and, and so that will continue uh, and so far this center has been is, is being run by people coming from France and Belgium taking turns and that is uh, quite tiring and uh, that cannot stay. we are waiting for people local people to be, to want to to learn and to practice that now uh, learning ruqya is not risky. When you make ruqya on yourself or your family, it's still not risky. Risks will start when you, when you are treating the public, right? And if you are coming to learn more about ruqya, the first thing we're going to teach you is risks and protection. What are the risks and how to protect yourself before you go any further. But there are risks, but it all can be handled. So you must not make it too much. And you must not have too much fear of jinns, of sahir. Just think that the people making sihr, working with shaitan, they have no fear of Allah and no fear of people. Uh, and they are feeling very confident. He can tell you, as long as I'm here, you're never going to get married, you're not, never going to have a child, etc. So he's so confident in his, uh, in his shaitan, you see. But where is our confidence in Allah and in our Quran? So that, no, I'm afraid if he does something to me, I can't do anything about it. Subhanallah, all your praise cannot do anything. All your Quran cannot do anything. All your faith cannot do anything. So this is terrible weakness. Uh, so this is terrible weakness. Allah has given us the solution in Quran and Sunnah. So we have to make it come out and come into life so that we can show what is the result of our Quran. MashaAllah. So there are risks, but those risks can be handled. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah in my group, we don't have any major problems. And Alhamdulillah, we are hundreds of people making ruqya throughout all these centers. May Allah Taala help us. So what was I saying? So we're expecting people to come to to learn more you can also come well if you have your own problems you can treat yourself as I have explained to you you can come to learn more to treat yourself now you can come to seek treatment in our center it's also the purpose of the center to treat people so treatment is paying is charging because that's what we are living on we're doing everything with that but training is free because we want to spread this as much as possible alhamdulillah next point is genes so Allah Ta'ala has preferred 
men on jinns because Allah Ta'ala says inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa I am putting a khalifa on earth whereas jinns were already on earth so it is the man who is the khalifa of Allah Ta'ala and not the jinns uh, and when Allah created Adam alayhi salam Allah asked Iblis to make sujood to Adam and did not ask Adam to make sujood to Iblis and also all the prophets Allah Ta'ala sent were only humans there never was a jinn prophet so men were prophets for jinns and for men so this is how Allah Ta'ala has preferred the men on jinns and this means that that is the position we must keep you must not be under jinns fearing them uh, asking for their help thinking that oh if you have a friend jinn is going to be fantastic for you uh, or if you have strong jinn this and that no no you must not give that importance to jinn and i'm going to explain to you inshallah that however a jinn would attack a man you can always beat him you can even kill him uh, most often jinns attack people in the dreams so you are sleeping you see a snake attacking you you see a dog you see a bull you see people you see militaries you see monster anything attacking you if you remember in your dream to say bismillah to say allahu akbar to read quran to read anything of quran that's going to stop him he's going to run away so what should you do you must catch him first and then you read ayat al-kursi you read 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 until he's dead and if he's dead in the dream, he's really dead, it is finished. Uh, how can you remember in your dream to catch him and to read? So you must prepare yourself before sleeping. So if anyone is used to make nightmares, you know, some, you know someone who is making nightmares, tell him prepare yourself before sleeping. You read Ayat al-Kursi, you read in your hands, nas. you wipe with that three times. And then you add this verse, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يَأْتِ بِكُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٌ Wherever you are, Allah will bring you all because Allah is Almighty. It is Baqarah 148. And you repeat that and you ask Allah wa ta'ala to bring you this jinn that is harming you and give you the power to beat him and you go to sleep with the anger to catch him you go to sleep as if you are hunting him as soon as you see him you catch him and you read 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 until he is finished and inshallah keep on doing that every night until you finish them all and it is very easy alhamdulillah always people say how is it possible to control your dreams to do to do uh, to have your will and your consciousness in your dream it is a question of preparing yourself and going to sleep with determination and anger to do it and alhamdulillah in every country i go i meet people who tell me yes i heard your speech i did it and uh, i caught him uh, in my dream and this and that happens alhamdulillah 3 days ago someone told me in london he did that too so it's just, just to tell you that it is very possible you just must try and you will see and when you do it it will increase your iman because and it will increase your uh, confidence in Allah ta'ala and in yourself and even if it is someone else having the jinn problem if it is your child screaming by night or your wife seeing a man who wants to uh, sleep with her or your mother hearing voices confusing your her mind you can yourself make the dua before sleeping and ask Allah to bring you his jinn in your dream and you'll catch him and kill him and the person will be relieved and even it is if it is the person making sihir uh, that you see in your dream if you beat him or you kill him in your in your dream that's going to break his sihir and turn back again him I'm going to tell you a couple of stories on this the first one there was a young lady and it was her step grandmother making sihir to her so the old lady came in her dream with a knife to stab her and the girl grabbed the knife off her and stabbed her and the old lady woke up in the morning and she was vomiting blood for three days then she passed away Ah, mashallah. And the other, uh, the, we have many, many stories like that with our patients. I had one patient, he was an idol worshipper. It was in Africa. So he left the idols. He did not choose to become Muslim or Christian. He told me he saw in his dream a bull attacking him. So he ran away and he hid behind the tree and the bull passed it was a head of a bull and a body of a man so when he saw it was a body of a man he tackled him and the guy fell down and his mask his head of bull fell down and he saw the person making sihir to him so he took the head of a bull and he put it on his head and he started running after him and now the other one ran away until he went inside the house and there was a court uh, and he saw all the sorcerers of the village in that court and they were saying, telling him yes did you catch him did you beat him they did not understand that he's now running away from the other one so look this man was not even Muslim not the, even having a deen but the way he was attacked he defended himself until he sent back the sihr to the people who did it uh, because they are not believer he is not believer so they confronted the one who had more determination uh, 
stronger personality, he beat the other one. That was it. So if you have the Iman, you're Muslim, you're praying, you're reading the Quran, asking Allah Ta'ala to help you, you can also beat them. So if you know that people are making sihr to you, even if you don't know who, just ask Allah Ta'ala to bring you them in your dream and to give you the strength to beat them. And you must know that sahir, you cannot forgive them because Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi. Allah does, does not forgive shirk and they are working with shaitan. So they are going to hell anyway. Uh, would you forgive or not forgive? Allah is not forgetting, forgiving them. So what is good for them is to be punished in dunya so that they might make tawbah, make repentance. Even if they don't, they will stop harming. You see, when uh, I used to not believe that sahirs could make tawbah, but uh, I remember the story of Musa salam with the sorcerers, and all the sorcerers converted to Islam, and he believed in Musa salam, and they all died shaheed. Whereas the soldiers with Pharaoh, they stayed with him and died with him in the kufr of Pharaoh. So the soldiers were worse than the sorcerers. But when did the sorcerers convert? When they were beaten. But before the confrontation, when Musa salam gave them da'wah, they did not listen to anything. But when they were beaten, they saw the power of Allah Taala. that's how they knew that there is something stronger than their power. And this is how to do with sorcerers, ask Allah Ta'ala to punish them, then if there is hidayah for them, fine. If not, anyway, you get rid of them. Uh, what am I saying? So this is the first way of beating jinns. A second uh, situation, some people when they are sleeping or about to sleep feel something coming heavy on them, making, uh, paralyzing them so they can't move, they can't uh, speak, maybe even they can't breathe. So that also is genes attacking people in that way. So if you feel that, what are you going to do? Uh, so you're sleeping or, and you, f you just feel something paralyzing you. So first of all, you're going to catch him. So how can you catch him when you are paralyzed yourself? Just hold your hands try to hold your hands, to catch your hands like this, uh, just a, a little bit, and once you have done that, you start reading in your mind. As your tongue is attached, you just leave your tongue, you read in your mind, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayul qayyumayt al kursi, until your tongue is released, and then you continue reading with your tongue at loud voice, and you hold him, don't let him go, continue reading, reading, until he's dead, or maybe he's run away. But in both cases, he will not come back. You see, that is very simple. I give you a third case. Uh, sometimes you see the jinns, so you cannot see the jinns in their uh, real state. But sometimes the jinns will come into our world in shape of man or snake or dog or cat or bird or some uh, shapes like that. As it happened for Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, when the jinn came to rob the sadaqah, another sahabi also killed a snake and it turned out to be a jinn. So it can happen. It is rare, but it can happen. So if you, it, if it happens that you see something like that weird and scary and you don't know how it came here so how are you going to do so you must know that genes cannot appear or disappear when you are looking at them you cannot look in an empty place and a gene will just pop out in front of you you have to look elsewhere then you turn back and suddenly you see something you don't know how it came here and once he's here he cannot go when you're looking at him you have to look elsewhere you turn back and he's disappeared so if you see this weird thing that is frightening and probably a jinn, what are you going to do? So just fix him. Uh, just look at him. Don't let him go. Uh, uh, fix him and start reading Ayat al-Kursi. So once you fix him, he cannot go anymore. And just keep on reading, reading, reading on loud voice. And if it is a bad jinn, he's going to burn in front of you and he's going to die. And that will be finished. No need jumping through from the window or making a car accident. Just look, look at him fixly and read, read, read. If it is a bad jinn, it's going to finish off. And a fourth situation is people having crisis, uh, falling, screaming. Uh, mostly it happens to women. Uh, why does it mostly happen to women? First of all, because sihr is a matter of jealousy, not a matter of interest. So they do it to destroy people's life without any interest. And that most happens between women. So women do it more and are affected more. Secondly, the sorcerers use male genes more than female genes. And these male genes, they like women to abuse of, of them. And thirdly, because women are more uh, weak than men, that means a woman can, uh, can cry easier than a man or can be afraid easier than a man. So when a gene is in the body of a woman, he can overtake her easier than if it was a man. So this is why it happens more to women than to men, but it still does happen to men. So if that does happen, what should you do? So you 
hold the person and you read Eid al-Kursi on him and you hit his neck with your hand like this gently as if your hand was um, a sword and you're chopping his head off. So when you do that after a few minutes, inshallah the jinn is going to feel his head being chopped off, he's going to run away and the person is going to wake up. So when the person wakes up, now you tell him now, we're going to ask Allah Ta to bring this jinn back to finish off with him. We're not going to let him play with us each time he will come, each time he will go. So you, uh, and you read on the person, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يَأْتِ بِكُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Until the jinn is back. When the jinn is back in him, now the situation has reversed instead of the jinn possessing the man and now it is the man possessing the jinn because we have brought him by the power of Allah and the words of Allah and this time we're going to hit his neck and read Ayat al-Kursi and he cannot run away as he did in the first place so we're going to continue until either he becomes Muslim or he dies and that's it there's no third solution to that right once we have done that I'm going to explain to you how we do but just so that you understand how it works. Once we have done that with the person, we'll tell him now, we're going to ask Allah Ta'ala to bring all the jinns where this one came from. If it is a jinn of the house, we're going to bring the jinns remaining in the house. If it is a sahir, a sorcerer who sent him, we're going to ask Allah to bring the jinns remaining with the sorcerer. If it is a pact that the ancestors did with jinns, we're going to ask Allah Ta'ala to bring all the jinns concerned by that pact. If it is the jinns that people worship, where there's an idol or river or forest or mountain, so we're going to ask Allah to bring all the jinns that people worship there. And you read on him, until they all come, and now we're going to discuss with them to make them become Muslim. Okay? Uh, I'm going to tell you a fifth case, how to beat jinns. It is the mental way. I give you a couple of examples. For example, if someone is having sexual dreams too much, unusual sexual dreams, so you are understanding that there's jinns coming in your dreams doing that to you. So what are you going to do? Before sleeping, you're going to speak to them. You say, you jinns that come in my dream, come here, I want to speak to you. When you say that to jinns, that attracts them, they have to come and listen. Uh, they cannot help coming, listening to what you're going to tell them. And then you read, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا In Surah Al-Rum, the verse 21. Uh, that means Allah has created from yourself uh, spouses or, uh, um, or husbands to find sakina and he has put amongst you rahma and love amongst you. So when you read that on jinns, they will understand that there cannot be marriage between men and jinn and Allah has created for them also female jinns or male jinns so that they will be happy with them and they're going to leave you and go with their, uh, their legal or natural uh, wives and husbands. So you repeat that verse about 30 times uh, so the jinns will Will understand and will go then you say now if I see you again in my dream I'm going to kill you and you go to sleep like that inshallah it will be finished uh, so this is the mental way so another example some people some cultures have habit of making sacrifices for jinns uh, putting uh, water or putting food or putting money or putting things in different places and then they understand Islam they want to get rid of it but they are afraid of jinns some do it on peers on uh, pious uh, people's graves uh, so how to get rid of that if you are afraid of the jinns that are there so same thing you call them oh you jinns taking sacrifices here come here I want to speak with you and you read say my prayer my sacrifice my life and death are for Allah Lord of beings the one uh, without uh, uh, an associate that is the order I have I have received I am the first one to submit myself so you read that also when you read that verse on those jinns that's going to destroy the sacrifices that have been given to them and it's going to compel them to oblige them to become Muslims so you also read it about 30 times then you throw all the things related to genes there. Now, the next point is protection. How can you protect yourself from jinn, ayn, and sihir problems? You have to read Qulhullahu Ahad al falaq al Nas three times after Subh, three times after Maghrib, three times before sleeping. Also, read Ayat al Kursi after each prayer and before sleeping. And also, read A'udhu bi kalimati Allah tamati min sharri ma khalaq. Bismillah al ladhi la yadurru ma asmi shayn fil ardi wa la fil samai wa huwa samil alim. Three times after Subh and after Maghrib, you must say Bismillah. 
Bismillah at five moments when you enter your house before eating, before taking your clothes off, before going into the toilet and before having relations with your wife or husband. In these five moments there is dua of Prophet ﷺ that are very important even if you don't know them. So at least say Bismillah and all those who live in your house teach them to say Bismillah at those moments. Also you must not leave any statue or image of something alive exhibited in your house uh, of man or animal because that makes jinns and shayateen to come into your house and uh, angels to run away. So even if it is uh, f your parents photos or marriage photo or um, or your children's photos, don't leave them exhibited, put them in the albums. And even if it is children's toys or um, uh, dolls or uh, teddy bears, so if those eyes show like something is alive, so you have to um, either uh, put them in the cupboard, I mean, so that they don't stay exhibited, or put tipex on their eyes so that you don't see anything alive in that. Uh, also, you must say Bismillah when you cross water, especially dirty water, or if you throw something in water, and especially hot boiling water, if you have made water for tea or for spaghetti or for rice, and you throw it away, you must say Bismillah, so you don't get problems with jeans. And also, if you do sins, so all the protections will go away. You cannot disobey Allah Ta'ala and help, hope that Allah is going to protect you. But you should fear that Allah is going to punish you, not to protect you. Uh, for example, if you go out of the house and you say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwta illa billah. So Rasulullah Sallallahu said, the angels will protect you and shaitan is going to go away from you. So a bit if you make the dua and you go out, you start looking at women. So the angels are going to leave you and the shaitan is coming back with you. And if it is a woman that's not correctly veiled, so also the angels are going to leave her and shaitan is going to come with her. So this is why the first and most important protection is to leave sins in the first place. And then all the dua and dhikr and Quran you're going to do is going to give you uh, spiritual strength and energy and light to protect you. And then there's, no, there's nothing that you can hang on yourself or keep with you or put in your house or put in your shop in your, uh, or in your car to protect you. It is only your actions, your taqwa, your dhikr, your dua. As Rasulullah said, Keep Allah, keep the religion of Allah. Allah will keep you. Keep Allah, you will find Him with you. And the next last point, brothers and elders, is shirk. So, Sihr is kufr and also forecasting the future uh, is kufr but there are some kinds of shirk that are not well known and practiced uh, I mean uh, by Muslims so there are four shirks the first one is sacrifices for jinns and would it be any yani animals to slaughter or milk to pour in the uh, in the river or in the ponds or uh, fruits to be given or candles to be lit outside so all this is sacrifices for jinn and it is shirk and the second is using the names of jinns in dhikr and dua and writings uh, and i you must be very careful if you find in any book some dua that you don't understand, some words that are strange. Uh, subhanallah, I find it even in an uh, introduction of Quran, this dua, Ilahi bi hurmati yamlikha maksalima kashfotat fatyanus, this and that, wa kalbihim qatmir. Oh my God, I ask you by the value of yamlikha maksalima kashfotat fatyanus, this and that, and their dog qatmir. And they say it is the people of the, uh, the people of the kaf, the uh, cave people, uh, the seven cave people. So how can you know it is the cave people? And even if it was the cave people, what is the point of asking Allah Taala by those names? We don't even say, Ya Allah, I ask you by the value of Muhammad and Nuh and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa. Why should we go to the cave people and their dog Qatmir? How can you say, Ya Allah, I ask your protection by the value of this dog that has died 2,000 years ago? What sense does that make? Uh, and it is all names of shayateen, nothing to do with the cave people. It is just tricks that jinns do on people to drive them astray. So all these kinds of names, brothers, never use them. Uh, never use them. We have in Ruqya, we found this jinn called Badduh. You find them so much in ta'wizes, in writings. Uh, and one Maulana once told me, Badduh, it is the name of Allah in, uh, in what? 
in Arabian language. Name of Allah, uh, 99 of, why do you need Arabian language or Syrianic language or whatever language and you don't even know what it is and it is always coming back to shirk. May Allah protect us. So never use uh, these unusual names. And third uh, shirk is uh, rings and bracelets for protection or for luck. And the fourth one, brothers, it is tama'im. Tama'im in Arabic is the thing you keep on you for protection. And in Arab countries you call it kitab or hijab. In Africa you call it grigri. In uh, Nigeria you call it juju. In uh, Comorian you call it uh, hiris. And in Indian you call it ta'wiz. And it is all the same. So some ulama from Hanafi and Shafi'i have have permissed, have permitted uh, the ta'weez that only has Qur'an and dua. That the things that are allowed to say, you are allowed to write them and to keep them. That is the only permission that does exist. But for something else, there is not. And really, when we get these ta'weez of people, most of the time we find these other names, these funny names, these funny signs, and we find, uh, we find these uh, squares with numbers and with different things and I have to tell you a bit about it uh, I have to tell you a bit about it because most of the time it's not correct things for example there's one ta'weez that we find very much in shops I didn't see it yet in England but it is written hafid and then hafid and then hafid and then hafid yeah. in all these ways hafid is protector and then under it if you see that ta'weez, just look carefully under it, there is uh, a poetry, there is a nazam uh, that says, that says, li khamsatun utfi biha harra al-waba'i al-fatima al-mustafa wal-murtada wa binahuma wal-fatima. I have five to protect me from big uh, difficulties, Mustafa, Murtada, their two sons and Fatima. So that half is they are talking about is not Allah. It is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Sayyidina Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein. This is your protection. Uh, so, uh, concerning those numbers, I just want to say it very short. Uh, they, some people say that those numbers are the words of Allah and verses of Quran turned into numbers. So that when you go to the toilet, uh, you will not take the words of Allah in the toilet. And that is wrong because the same paper, you have Quran and then you have the numbers. So that's nothing to do with the toilet. And how can you change uh, words into numbers? So the Arabs did not have numbers and they used alphabetic to count. Alif is one, Ba is two, Jim is three, Dal is four, Ha is five, then it goes 10, 20, 30, then 100, 200. So if you take Allah, Alif is one, Lam is 30, Lam is 30, and Ha is five, that's 66. So can you replace Allah by 66? Can you say 66, help me, 66, forgive me? Is that possible? If you take a paper, you fill it all up with 66, is that going to protect you from something? For example, they say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim 786. I didn't check it out. But suppose it is 786. Can you drink? You say 786 and you drink. Or you go to the toilet, you say 786 and you go. Will that stop shaitan eating with you? Will that stop shaitan looking at you in the toilet? That does not exist. The such thing does not exist in Islam. And time came, we made the rocky on someone and Jin spoke. I said, what's your name? He said, I'm 66. You see that? If Allah 1 plus 30 plus 30 plus 5 give you 66, how many other names can give you 66? You can make so much names that give you 66, so you don't know who you're talking about. Huh? So may Allah Ta'ala help us, inshallah. Uh, I just remind you that we're on a Rokia campaign for explaining, for treating and for training people. And uh, so now, if you have any questions, really I'd prefer not to, uh, not to uh, ask personal uh, subjects. Don't tell me that your head is paining, your stomach is paining, doctors didn't find anything, and your stomach is not working. If you see those symptoms, blockages in life, unusual health problems, unusual mental states, and bad dreams, so you know you have a sihr or jinn or ayn problem, you should get treated. Either treat yourself by these verses or come learn more to treat yourself or come uh, for, to get treatment so you'll have to pay for that. That's it. That's what I can tell you. No use making a private uh, uh, my, this problem, that problem. That's how we can uh, answer to that. So if there's other questions to understand the subject, inshallah, you can say. Yes. Can you just explain to us uh, 
and Ain, because some of us were not familiar with the term Sihr or Ain. So Sihr is Jadu, Ain is Nazar. So Ain is to look at something and uh, with um, ad admiration uh, and not mentioning Allah wa ta'ala say oh this is big, this is nice, this is good looking, oh he's very active, oh he's very intelligent and you don't mention Allah wa ta'ala it's going to break the barakat that is in that thing so then you'll be tired, you'll not have energy and uh, if it's uh, someone very good looking he will get a bit ugly and that kind of situation uh, that is uh, Ayn, mostly it is not uh, intentional and some people have that, I mean, as soon as they admire something, it will break. Otherwise, it comes from, from a group. So everybody's saying, oh, he's such a nice, this, such a good that, and that's going to break him. So that is Ayn, and uh, Sihr is, uh, is satanic, uh, shaitanic work that is done to block your life or to get you uh, uh, ill or to harm you. Yes? Verses? Yeah, so those who need the verses, yeah, write it down so I don't repeat it many, many, many times. So after Fatiha, Ayat al Kursi, Qulu Allah, Had al Falaq al Nas, you have Surah al A'raf 117 to 122. So it's Surah 7, Surah Al A'raf 117 to 122, and Surah Yunus, that is Surah 10, uh, 81, 82. Surah Yunus 81-82 and Surah Taha, that is Surah 20, 68-70. Yes. Can you give us a thought design about the conversion of the Vatican Jinn? Huh. Conversion of the Vatican Jinn, that was in the very beginning of the Jinn catching. Uh, we started this gene catching. I'm going to tell you the story because maybe a lot of people saw it on YouTube and are wondering how is this happening. So it's first... Well, well, since 2005, I'm going around in tours, in campaigns, especially in Africa, to train people, establish centers, and to treat people. So the first group I trained in Burkina Faso when I left them, sorcerers were making sihr on them like rain, on them, on their families, on their patients. So if someone comes for a small problem, he'll get a bit better than he will have 10 problems. So that did it block the sorcerers so that the ruqya will not uh, be possible in that country. And so that the brothers ended up spending all their time makes, making ruqya to one another. So much they were overwhelmed by that sihr. And one of them already was possessed by jinns before getting into Rokia. So he was reading Quran for himself and he was fighting a jinn. So he was fighting him until he, he, he got hold of him. He was near, near to kill him and the jinn ran away. So he got sad how all this work, uh, all this effort, and now he's going to run away, get uh, some power again and come back. So he said, Ya Allah, bring him back to me so I can finish him off. And immediately the jinn came back onto him. And he managed to finish him off. So since then he realized that if any patient comes, he would just say, Ya Allah, bring me his jinn so I can get hold of him and immediately the jinn will come. And the jinn will be surprised, say, what am I doing here? I was with that person. How did that come to this person? Uh, we said, we ask Allah to bring you and Allah has brought you. And that uh, makes us easier to make, give them doubt. And if they don't want, we're going to cut them to pieces just by hitting them until they die if they don't want to. So that makes them much more uh, responsive to Dawa. So when we saw this in the first place, we thought it was something special Allah has given him because he has suffered too much in his life. But then we discovered that any person that has been possessed by jinns could do it. And we started having more and more of them. So that's how we got into this jinn catching. It started in 2007. So at that time we got uh, what happened. Some people told us that uh, Christians used the jinns uh, for their dawah and to attack Muslims and these kinds of things. Well, we said, we're going to try to see what's in that. And we asked Allah Ta'ala to bring the chief of the jinns in Vatican. And he came. And it was, mashallah, I mean, it was really, uh, how do you say, uh, spectacular. He, when he came, he started saying, um, what did he say again? Uh, sacrilege. You say sacrilege in English? It's sacrilege, sacrilege, sacrilege. I said, well, well, what's, what is it? What's going on? He said, I was praying. Oh, oh, so he, he was so annoyed we needed a bit of time to cool him down. Then he said, okay, you know what, uh, as you are here and there's nothing you can do about it, so we just want to discuss with you, are you okay? He says, I don't want to. 
but I don't have any choice. I said, that's good. <laughs> so I told him, what do you think of Isa? He said, Isa is, is, uh, is God. I said, no, Allah is God. He said, no, Isa is God. So I told him, well, just say, uh, oh my God, show me who you are, Allah or Isa. So he said it. And as soon as he said it, he said, it's Allah. All these years, I've been going astray. And my family, they're all going to Jahannam. And this and that. So this is how he converted to Islam. Huh? So, well, it, it was a bit longer than this, but that is the, <laughs> the strong points. But uh, anyway, but this uh, affair of jinn catching, alhamdulillah ta'ala, I mean, that changed the balance between us and the sorcerers. Because before that, we were all, all, always were in defensive position. And they will attack us. I mean, if we put lots of energy to treat you, to take the sihr off you, they can put it back right away. So if many people are making sihr onto you, there's no way out. Because by the time we remove some, there are more that are coming in. So now it has reversed because we can take the jinns off the sihr and he will have no more power. And even if more sihr come, it will be easier for us to break them than for them to renew their power. So alhamdulillah, now we are a bit more relaxed. I mean, it is always a lot of effort to fight these shayateen and sihr. But alhamdulillah, we're a bit more relaxed and that allows us to go into many countries and to alhamdulillah, we continue. Yeah. Yeah, the sihr. When you eat sihr, so the body, the, there's something strange that's not from your body, and your organism attacks it. And, and it's, like if, it's like if you are, something's itching you, and you just scrub it until you're bleeding. So uh, that did not get you bleeding, it is you scrubbing it that got you bleeding. That's how uh, the sihr, when you eat it, makes ulcer. It is because your body is attacking something that it cannot find. So, so is, it, is, it, is it a physical presence in the body? <coughs> how can I say? I mean, the sihr, it, look, the sihr as nature is words. Like the Qur'an is words. Now you can put Qur'an in a book and we read Qur'an on water and on oil to use it. But as an essence, it is words. You see? So sihr it is words. But they read it on knots, they can read it on water, they can read it on different things. And that, that takes shape. Uh, so when they put it in that water in your food you eat it, that will come like glue and stick. And many people when they are having sihr, so they can uh, spit or vomit things gluish. Or when they take that sanamaki that empties their stomach, they will see things like gluish and gluish coming out of their stomach. And that is the sihr. Yeah. Uh, what is the benefit of surah jinn? Yeah, we do read, read the Surah Jinn in Ruqya. It has effect on jinns. It is also mentioned in Hadith. There are many Surah that are, have effect. The Surah Jinn, Surah Safat, Surah Baqarah, uh, uh, many, many Surah. But still, the, the essential ones is the ones I have told you. Yeah, just let the other ones. Uh, yeah. Um, you know these so-called Molana that possess uh, jinns, are they all bad or do, do some possess good colleagues as well? Well, Maulanas are Maulanas. You cannot say so-called Maulanas. If he's Maulana, he's Maulana. Now, he could be Maulana doing bad thing or doing good thing, but he still is Maulana because he has finished his studies and he is Maulana. So, uh, well, some are using jinns. Well, uh, some say they use jinns. Well, they do use jinns. Well, actually, uh, well, would it be, uh, forget about Maulana using jinns. Well, someone who's using jinns to cure people, I do not agree on that uh, because it, uh, because when, if, if I have genes to remove genes from other people, so uh, sooner or later some, uh, some ill people will come and their genes will be stronger than my genes and they're going to break them out, you see. So if I'm a strong person and I beat you and you and you, well, I'll get, uh, sooner or later I'll get to some people who may break me into pieces and that will be finished. Uh, and when sorcerers will understand that these people are using those genes to break the sorcery, they're going to make the sihir, the sorcery, on the genes and they will be finished. So, uh, jinns cannot be used in Rokhya to remove jinns. So, 
mostly when someone is into that system, it is just genes that are turning him around. I mean, those genes, when another person comes, they tell you, just go have a look around for a couple of weeks and then you come back. And they said, yes, you have removed them, you have killed them, you have done this and that. And it is just doing nothing. Yes? To use the genes? <sighs> look, the... Um, I mean, uh, I don't want to go into a debate of fiqh, but the, you can read different, uh, ad, uh, different opinions on fiqh, and the correct position, I think, is just simply that it, it, it's not using genes that is haram. It is depending what you are using them for and how, uh, what is, uh, is there in exchange, what are they doing for you. Uh, so these people using jinns, so if it is Muslim jinns, for example, it happened, it happened once that uh, jinns came in Ruqya and they said, we like what you want and we want to help you, but we have conditions to help you. I said, what conditions? They said, you must make Qiyam al-Layl every night. All the women in the house must have hijab and this and that. I said, you know what? If you like what I do, you want to help me, help me. You don't want to help me, don't help me. There's no conditions. I'm not going to make Qiyam al-Layl so that you will help me. If you think that this treatment is halal and this is giving hidayah to people, helping people, you want to help people, go ahead, help people. You don't want to, forget about it. Uh, don't tell me you want this and that conditions. And now, subhanAllah, I'm going to say, Madhur, no, make hijab, the jinns are going to run away and then I cannot uh, treat people anymore. That's this. Depending on jinns. Uh, so these are the good ones. This is the good ones. But if it is the other ones, they will tell you, I have very special name of Allah Tabarak Ta'ala. It is Badduh. And you must wake up every night at 12. You say, Ya Badduh 100 times. Then you say, Subhana Badduh. Then you say, La ilaha illa Badduh. Ha, that's it. You see, that is that sort of conditions that those genes and they will come into your dreams like pious man with a lot of nur and this and that. And you say, Allah has given me karam, it's incredible. Uh, have accident, you'll be afraid of speed or afraid of night or something. Now, if you had a very hard childhood and you're always beaten up, so you'll have your personality will be too, uh, you can't speak in front of people, you don't have confidence in yourself, these sort of things. If you have, if you have gone through very, very hard uh, hardship, so uh, that could affect you. But if nothing happens and poof, you just become depressed, you leave school, you leave, uh, you become like a crazy man. So this is not a normal thing. This has come from jinn and sihr. So this is psychological problems. If, uh, if someone has lived difficult situations that uh, made him like that, so that can be solved through psychotherapy. We also do and teach psychotherapy in our group and in our centers. Uh, but uh, I had once uh, a speech with a, a psychiatric uh, a psychiatric, uh, and he, uh, he explained the people, the uh, uh, symptoms of the people he's treating. And it is absolutely the same symptoms as us. That means it is the same people coming to us that are going to them. Uh, it's only the dreams that he doesn't ask people, but it is the same people. And he said, we don't have any explanation of these things. You call them uh, uh, schizophrenia, this and that, but we don't have any explanation. It's not, I mean, it's not that the person has suffered, it's not that the person, his parents are split, it's not that the person has taken drugs, but any kind of explanation we have tried to put on it does not match. So we have excluded any possible explanation is not matching for those cases. And we don't, and we don't have any clue uh, to remove it. We just give uh, uh, drugs so that it will stop their brain functioning. Uh, I mean, when you get angry, there's some uh, chemical thing happening in your brain. So they will, we'll give them those chemicals to neutralize those things. So your brain is not never getting angry in this that you're just like a uh, like a <laughs> They're not moving, not having any reaction. So that's what they do. And they said it is there for life, lifetime drugs. Even if after 20 years, if the person leaves it, uh, he will become like he was in the first day. So, yeah, yeah, we're finishing. Uh, so this is why really I, uh, I mean, those pills, it can be useful for someone who's getting very nervous and breaking things and wanting to commit suicide, etc., to calm him down. But that's not getting him cured. It's just 
getting it cooled down to, to uh, by the time you get the solution, or even if you don't get the solution, just to keep him calm, better than nothing. But uh, really, I'd recommend Ruqya for all people who are in those cases. جزاكم الله خير سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين